This video is to be used for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace individual research or licensed investment advice. Unique experiences and past performance does not guarantee future results. Trading stocks, options, and spot currencies involves substantial risk and there's always the potential for loss. Your trading results may vary. No representations are being made that any software or training will guarantee profits or not result in losses from trading. This is the Premier Trade Forex Report. Good afternoon, traders. This is your Forex Report for October 5th. I'm Matt Krupp. The dollar was having one of its best weeks in quite a long time until the currency suddenly came under heavy fire this morning. We have been waiting all week for the September payrolls data in hopes of not only a good reading for last month, but a revision to the August report which showed the first net jobs loss in four years. Traders did get what they were looking for with 110,000 jobs in September and huge revision to the prior month from negative 4,000 to positive 89,000. Additionally, the Labor Department upwardly revised the July figure. The unemployment rate did tick higher by 0.1% to 4.7%, but this was in line with expectations and did not hold the dollar back. The U.S. currency spiked sharply higher in the broad market. However, this rally lasted less than 10 minutes before most pairs fell into tight consolidation patterns. Just a few minutes after Fed Governor Do Donald Kahn began to speak about the condition of the U.S. economy and the recent FOMC rate cut, Kahn said he believes economic growth will continue at a moderate pace with housing remaining a heavy drag. He added that the Fed's decision to cut rates by 50 basis points was in an effort to head, to head off more dramatic effects of the current crunch. But perhaps the most important thing the Fed governor said was that he was concerned about a weaker dollar adding to the inflation problems in the U.S. We thought this could be a dollar positive as foreign officials have also voiced concern over the weak dollar recently. However, shortly after Khan's remarks hit newswires, the greenback turned over and plummeted more than 100 pips against several major counterparts. The market has since fallen completely flat and we will now wait to see how traders will proceed with this wild ride at next week's open. And now for the big picture. The primary reason today's employment data was so incredibly important is that traders believe the Fed's next move with rates will likely depend on the results. Fed funds futures were pricing an about 75% chance the FOMC would take another 25 basis points off the overnight rate on October 31st, just before the report. Moments after the release, those odds were reduced to a less than 50% chance. Of course, support for the dollar was still very short-lived. At this juncture, we do not see the Fed lowering rates again at the end of this month when the FOMC meets. Donald Kahn today mentioned that a weaker dollar means higher inflation, especially since the demand for foreign goods is still very strong. With the greenback already on its knees, we don't believe the Fed will want to be responsible for delivering a knockout punch with further easing in monetary policy right away. After all, the yields on 10 and 30 year government bonds have only risen since the Fed lowered rates last month. These long dated maturities are what mortgages are based on, which means the housing market is getting zero relief from the Fed's move. While we think it, is, it was the right thing to do at the time, another move this month could prove to be a very bad decision and the Fed knows it. As long as incoming data over the next week is decent, futures should show lesser odds of another cut. This should promote at least some mild dollar strength in the short term. But then again, we thought this morning's data should have too. Next week should be very interesting to say the least. A look at the week ahead. The economic calendar begins with only a few lower tier indicators from the UK on Monday morning, such as manufacturing and industrial production. The US session may also be a bit dull in recognition of Columbus Day. New Zealand business confidence is due out Monday night. Tuesday's calendar consists of German and UK trade balance figures, which are not big market movers, followed by Canadian housing starts in the FOMC minutes from the September meeting. Wednesday morning is yet another light calendar, with no important European or US releases scheduled. That night we pick up a little with Australian employment and a BOJ rate decision. The Eurozone will release GDP figures on Thursday morning, followed by US trade balance and weekly claims figures. Canada will also report its trade balance Thursday. 
New Zealand reports retail sales that evening in Asian trading, which will bring us to the final hours of the week. Friday is our biggest day with U.S. PPI, retail sales, and consumer sen sentiment to wrap it up. This is not the most imp uh, exciting calendar we have ever laid eyes on, but we still expect some good price action all week from the currencies. Until next week, have a good day.